welcome everybody welcome back to homestead heart and i am outside today and i'm walking the fence line here and i'm going to give everybody an update on where we are now we've gotten quite a bit done out here many of you may not know this but our tractor went down again starter you can wait for me bud starter went out on it so now we have to the ag pro center they can't get a starter for us so now we have to try to find somebody to take the starter to and um and have them to rebuild our starter so that's what we're trying to do now but what we have run into the starter is jammed it's like they attempted to fix it before but then they just jammed the bolt or something up in there and it's hard to get it out without breaking i don't know what mr h was saying but it's something behind it that is about to break trying to get that bolt out so i don't know i don't know <laughs> but anyway i'm gonna stop here because this is as far as we've gotten so well it's not as far as we've gotten but it's really dense up in there and we've had issues with coyotes being back on the farm uh like five or six of them and grizzly and taimu are not patrolling right now so I'm going to stop here, but I'm going to show you back there. You see how dense? Now that's how far the trail is going to where we have been starting from. But I'm going to stop here because the coyotes have been seen all back up in there at night. Come on, bud. So I'm not going to go back there right now. But right here, we've cleared out. I'm going to turn around so you can see we've been clearing out here. And now I'm actually able to get right up against the fence line whereas we couldn't do that before where i'm standing at right now brush and trees have been cut down here in this area here going all the way and that's what i'm going to show you and we have been doing that work by hand yes so we do have more trees right here and i think this is the area where our chainsaws actually those Ryobis, that's where that's where they stopped working. So now that we have we took those back and we explained to them what we were doing, and um they told us, well, um these aren't the best chainsaws for what y'all are trying to do. So they turned us in they showed us the Echo brand. I think that's what it is. So that's now that's what we have. So now we can continue from this point on back cutting down trees we don't have our tractor to pull out the brush so we have to pull out the brush manually with um by hand and with logging chains okay so that's what we have been doing here now this is how moo and grizzly have been getting through to other properties but look there is no fence here you just got these two pieces of wire that's it there's no fence over here and we really didn't notice it until we cleared all of this out we thought this was a fence there's no fence it's just those two wires yeah so plus we saw where the where the trespassers were getting in at we were able to see and i would take you i'll take you back there at another time but we were able to see where they were getting in we found um like boot tracks down in certain parts of the mud where it's low and stays kind of wet we saw um uh, boot prints there and cigarette packets and all kind of and not old stuff okay new stuff all right so all of this here let me just turn the camera around so you can see all right so as i walk through here you can see some of the wire has been pulled off of this old fence here and I'm back up against the fence line again and and this only has one wire just the one see here that's it and they just jump right through the dogs people anybody just jump right on through and we've never been able to get this close to the fence line before so now to be able to get through here is pretty good here is a tree that honestly 
I honestly don't want them to cut down this beautiful tree if at all possible I would like for this to stay at the fence line I don't know if we're going to be able to do it once we start actually stretching this fence out I don't know but I sure would like it if we could keep it I mean it's just a beautiful tree to run along the fence line now let me come out of here Look at all of this. Oh, look, there's another little cat up in the brush right there. Oh, that's that that's that cat that likes Golden Girl. <laughs> She's always fighting him off. She's like, uh-uh. We don't like you. She's like, uh-uh. Let me see if you can see him. See him right there looking at me? <laughs> yeah. Bye, kitty witty. So anyway, you all, so let's get on back to this. So we've been doing a lot, clearing out a lot, and we've been doing it in phases, okay? Taking down trees. Now here's, the, here's where the tractor stopped at. Actually, we were trying to get it, as you can see, look, you can see through there, this is where most of the tractor work stopped right here as we were working our way through tractor work chainsaw work this is where most of it stopped at right here and I don't know if you can see but there's Mr. Green Jeans right there and that's where Mr. Green Jeans has been stuck since the starter went out on Mr. Green Jeans and this is the brush that we have to clear in order to stretch the fence to in order to continue stretching the fence because we've already done quite a bit but we still have more to do and we got to get all of this cleaned out we don't want any of this brush remaining we want this line completely clean and like i said we're doing it all by hand all of it So getting ready getting ready to cut this tree we're still running into more and more of these really really old attachments and I'm thinking there's another one over there more than likely they're broken busted up I don't think they're any good but we're finding them in different places as we go all along this fence line it looks like the fence line was some kind of a storage place but as I try to uh, lift it up i can't even i can't even move it so whatever the other side is is buried under the ground so we're gonna have to I'm gonna have to get the guys to come on over and uh get this out of the way so we can finish clearing along this line because this is smack dab in the middle of where the fence is going
so now we're making a fence stretcher so we'll be able to stretch the fencing so we're gonna do that I got my safety glasses <laughs> <laughs> you was about to blow the cover. I was about to bust, blow it. bust the situation. I'm sorry. I was about to bust it up. Yeah, I had to turn you down. Get the turn. <laughs> you had to put me on me. Yeah. <laughs> loud. Hi, but you know, what are you saying? I'm like, shoot, you about to blow our cover. And then when I when when you said that the brother looked at he was like, had that look on his face like, no, she didn't say that. Of course I did. I'm trying to find out how much you got. And then I pushed the, pushed the thing down because because uh, he was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to give y'all a deal. What I did was, Mr. H drilled all the holes and the bolts went in perfectly. However, we had to go back. And the second side, the board that is going to be coming off and on as we put the fence in to stretch that board, the holes needed to be a little bit wider so that it could, the board could slide on and off easy. However, the bolts on the other board is still going to be fitting pretty tight. We only needed one board to have holes a little bit bigger, not quite an inch just in half inch because we're using these half inch hex bolts I think is what they called them at tractor supply so we got these half inch hex bolts and that's what we're using to make our fence stretcher and we're using a half inch paddle bit and it's working just fine so now we're going to put the other post back on just to make sure that everything is going to be working okay when we put that fence in there to stretch it out Mr. H is busting over roots. Man. You looking pretty cool in them them <laughs> pretty cool in the, huh? in in them their safety glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to get it done. You getting it done. You getting it done. Gotta get this fence done. Yes, we gotta get her done. Mr. H is putting concrete in this hole here. This is going to be our corner right here. So we have to make sure our, co our corners are cemented. So he's already put concrete in the hole. Now we're going to get some water in.
Mr. H. Uh, down the end. We got all of these in the ground. There he is down there. We still have a ton of fence poles to do. This is hard work, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. This is tough. But we're getting it done. Getting it done. string of the fencing done and I'm taking out the um, I'm taking out the uh, other the leftover piece of this wire right here and Mr. H is getting ready to attach another roll of fencing this 
we're using a um, a homemade fence stretcher. And we're using the front of our truck to to um, to do the stretching. We have it attached to a uh, a chain and a come along, and that's how we're pulling it because our tractor, the starter went out on the tractor, and boy, is it difficult to get that thing off so we've been struggling to take the starter off so we can't just let that stop us we have to keep going you ready mistake
Okay, so we have this done here. But, you all, we're going to have to go on the other side because we forgot to put in our corner bracing for these posts here. Which is fine because we still have several feet on this on the other side of this fence that we've already stretched we still have several feet that is still our property but our neighbors are cool <laughs> it doesn't matter you know that we can still go over and get that corner post put in so we forgot to do that we were just really pushing to get it done that we forgot to put that corner post in but we are going to go back and do that and these are cemented into the ground down here yes they are and we've gotten them in all the way down now this was the tricky part for the trees let me show you so now since we've gotten this part installed right here we had to maneuver this behind this massive tree right here let me let me show you look at that this tree has branches that are hanging over this fence, which could be a potential problem. So everything that's going in the direction of the fence, going over the fence, right here at the base, we're taking all of those down, okay? Yes, we are, we're taking them down. Now let me show you this. As I go around this ginormous tree. Since we put the fence in, I put in another little garden fence here in this area because this is where my raspberry canes have been planted okay so this is going to be the raspberry area right here so the raspberries are right up against the fence line and I'm going to go around the back side of this I got to put some kind of hinge or something on this door but anyway it's just to keep the rabbits out because as soon as I planted my raspberry canes I came out two days later and rabbits were already chewing on them so I had some of this um, little fencing here that we purchased I don't know when we got this but we had several rows of this over by the raised beds that we were going to use for something else and we never did so we did have it already so that we just took it and brought a roll of it over here and put it around our little raspberry patch right here now let me take you on down so as you can see this is another thing about this fence line look at how we had to maneuver we had to really do some serious maneuvering here in order to get this fence around this cedar tree because we did not want to cut the cedar tree down and we did take off all of the you can see where we did some cuts here and here at the bottom in the direction that the fence was going we didn't want those to be protruding through so we did cut those yeah but we didn't want to take down the cedar tree now here is where it gets kind of tricky <laughs> because we also had to come around this pine tree as well but that's okay you know we were able to maneuver it and we did cement these posts we cemented not every single post i think we cemented every fourth or fifth post or something like that but we got them all cemented in all the way down and this fence is running quite a ways down here yeah it's running quite the distance but in these posts right here you all there wasn't a difference much of a difference between the price of the wooden post the eight foot wooden post and the eight foot t post because the wooden posts they were having a sale on them and so the price difference there wasn't much of a difference at all so we decided hey let's go ahead and get the wooden posts they're stronger we cemented them uh every fifth post I believe it was yeah I think it was every fifth post that we cemented into the ground and it just made more sense to do it that way since it wasn't much of a price difference these are stronger and they would last a long long time so. all right y'all so that is going to do it I wanted to share with you some of the footage and different things that we had been uh, doing and how we are actually 
just pushing through without the tractor because we just can't let that uh, stop us. It has slowed us down because, you know, truth and reality is, is that tractor can do a whole lot more, a whole lot faster than our hands. <laughs> so having to do it all by hand is taking a lot more time than I would like. But at least it's getting done. It's a slow process. And now that the weather isn't freezing anymore, it's going to make it a lot easier for us to get out and get it done. We have a ton of trees that need to be burned here. This mountain of trees <laughs> that need to be burned because we've been pulling the trees from the fence line to this area. And we've even created another burn area further down the fence line because we're not going to drag all of that to one spot. <laughs> so we have that. We have another burn area too. So we have a lot to burn, but I don't want to burn something this. I they follow me everywhere. I don't want to burn something this size and we're not tending to it. So it has to be at a time where my attention is not on anything else that I can literally make sure that I'm paying attention to this so that it doesn't get out of control because it has been fairly dry, but it's been raining the last few days. But I want to be able to keep my eye on this because we've had dry conditions and lots of wind. So, and then Grizzly and Tamu. So let me tell you about that. Okay. So, Grizzly and Taimu are restrained. Yes, they are. They have not been able to roam freely for the last just about month now. Mr. H has to walk them on the chain every day to get them their exercise in every day. And he does that and they go all the way around the perimeter, the property, you know, he has to do that. Let me tell you, Rainy hasn't been here for the last month. Reason being is Rainy went into heat again and brought all of the dogs to the yard, right? <laughs> and one of our neighbors was coming out and the dogs were uh, on their property brawling our dogs some other dogs over rainy and their dog too but their dog was actually chained now they let their dog off sometime because their dog comes over to our house because tamu and their dog is buddy buddy right they run together <laughs> so rainy because she goes in heat every time she goes in heat and all the dogs come and there's always chaos and so the neighbor did have an opportunity to speak with rainy's owner to let them know about or one of her owners to let the, uh, her know about the trouble that was being caused when rainy goes in heat and asked if and when rainy goes in heat could they um, put her up because of the brawling that takes place with all of these different dogs that are coming from all over the place, right? It's not just the Rottweilers, it's some other dogs, some pit bulls that come from way away, dogs that we've never even seen before have shown up on our property and our dogs are battling them and they're not just battling on our property, they're battling on their property and they have small children. So they called the sheriff or one of them called the sheriff and the sheriff came out and um, and uh, when he came out, he saw what was happening. Uh, I was out there, <laughs> you know, because I was notified that uh, of what was happening, you know. And so when I went out there, the sheriff was already talking to the neighbor and so the sheriff went to try to talk to Rainey's owner and let him know. And Rainey's owner basically said, well, the dogs are always out. They're always over here. And Rainey's always, you know, and we ne we don't have a problem with Rainey. It's just when she goes into heat, the trouble, right? So 
Basically, the sheriff told us all, all of us, to keep our dogs restrained because it wouldn't be fair to write Rainey's owner a citation for her being loose when all of our dogs run loose from time to time, including the neighbor's dog, right? So he basically said, if I give them a citation, I got to give everybody one, which is right, right? That's fair because our dogs are everywhere. And nobody's ever complained about our dogs. Our dogs are not damaging anybody's property. You know, as far as we know, they've been helping to keep the coyotes away and keeping the coyotes from killing our neighbor's chickens, right? Because we have neighbors that have livestock and our dogs have really been like, what, what it, why is she in the brush? Okay. Why are you going in the bushes, gals? Both of them down in the bushes. And there go they men. Both of them down in the bushes. So anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway, our dogs have been kind of keeping the neighborhood okay, <laughs> you know? So nobody, and, and sometimes our neighbors would drive by and they would say, just want to let you know your dog is up on the highway up there going down. Don't want nothing to happen to them. So they know they're our dogs. They know they belong to us. And when they get concerned about them, they'll stop and let us know your dog is up on so-and-so and so, you know? And so... We, we know that our, our neighbors that live around us, if there was ever a problem with our dogs, we know, they know where we live, they would come and let us know, but we've never gotten one single complaint in all the time that we've had Grizzly and Tamu. We've never gotten a complaint about them, you know, but in all fairness, we want to keep our dogs on our property. And we know that Great Pyrenees dogs have a tendency to roam for miles and miles and miles. It's just in their nature, that's what they do. You know, but now because of all of this, now we have to keep our dogs chained until we can finish the fence. So that put added pressure upon us and we've been working as hard as we can <laughs> with our hands <laughs> to get as much done as we can get done, you know. So that's where we are with that. My poor Grizzly and Tamu. They are absolutely miserable, and I know they are absolutely miserable, but we don't need citations, and we don't need anything to happen to them, you know. And even the sheriff said, I mean, if dogs come on your property, you got a right to defend your property. You can do what you want. You know, if they're on your property, we know what they meant, what he meant by that, but I would never harm somebody else's dog. That, that pet, somebody loves that animal. And I would never do that, right? I, I would, especially if the dog is harmless. I could, if the dog was trying to attack me, you know, that's one thing. Or, or, you know, killing my chickens and my animals, you know, that's, but that's not what was going on. They simply wanted to get to Rainy, you know, and my dogs weren't having that. You know, you're not just going to come on our property, you know, and, and they weren't having that, especially Grizzly and Moo both have an affinity for Rainy <laughs> so they would definitely be looking out for her and they've been miserable and when Mr. H walks them around the property and they get to um, the neighbor's property where Rainy lives they just bark and whine and whine and bark you know so they miss her and I actually miss Rainy uh, being here too because Rainy walked with me when I walked on the homestead she was always just with me you know, so I truly miss her. And, um, yeah, and I, I hate that had to happen. But I understand, I do understand that, you know, the neighbor had to do what they felt they needed to do to protect their children. Because the children can't come outside to that, to dogs brawling. They could have been injured or something, you know. So I understand. I really understand, you know. So... With that being said, until we get the fence complete, and we still have about 500 more feet to go before we'll be finished with that side. Just with that side. 
<laughs> we still got more to do, but with that side of our property in five, we have 500 feet that we have to go back now, the part that I showed you, and we have to get the chainsaws and get the rest of the trees out and get the chains and pull the rest of the trees out. And then once that 500 feet is done, we can stretch it all out. And once it's all stretched out, that 500 feet will be done and the boys can get, we can let them loose because they won't be able to go in that direction. But if they want to really get out, they can still go this direction, go through that fence where the cows are and circle all the way back around and end up at Rainey's, right? <laughs> so the dogs are smart. They're not stupid. They know how to get around. If they wanted to, they'll, they'll patrol that fence line and they, they'll see that, okay, we can't get out this way. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> And they will circle, they will go miles around if they have to, to get back around to raining, you know? And that's just not what we want. <sighs> yeah. This child, here. So, anyway, you all, that's gonna do it. I just want to give you all an update. We are pushing forward. And we are improvising. Thanks, Tom and Jerry. Thank you, Tom and Jerry. So we are, so we are improvising. We are using the truck instead of the tractor. The T-post that we're going to be driving in the ground, because we are going to be using a T-post along this line that I just showed you. So we'll be doing about... I think it's uh, four T posts and then one of the wooden posts and that post will be cemented in the ground and that will just be that when the ground freezes you know I've learned that when the ground freezes it can push the T post it can raise the T post up out of the ground during those winter months right and so if you add a wooden post every fifth uh, post and cement it that will help to keep the t-post in the ground so that's what we're going to do there so we still have our work cut out for us it's kind of um you know drizzly out here today but you know i'm gonna get back out here because now i am <laughs> it's okay now for me to come back out and do some things i just can't <sighs> I can use the chainsaw as long as I wear my protective glasses, all right? <laughs> as long as I'm out here working, if I keep my glasses on, then it's all good. But I cannot be out here without my protective glasses, which is a duh, right? But that's been my hard-headed self. So glasses from now on. So yeah, it's not raining. The ground is too wet for me to do anything in the garden. So I'm going to come back out here now with my gloves and I'm going to start back pulling um, more of the brush out and just kind of clearing the way still because we still have a lot to do. And so I'm going to get back to work on that. All right, y'all. So I believe that is going to do it for this video. I got a feeling that this one is going to be very long. Um yeah <laughs> i got a feeling but in any case you all that is it that is it for this particular part we're going to be cutting out because of the way the the way that irrigation oh it's a big chicken hawk because of the way that irrigation is running right along just about the fence line what we're going to do, <clears throat> and this is going to be the difficult part, is we're going to have to unroll that fence, right, by hand. And as we are unrolling it, of course, we're going to have to maneuver it along that fence line. And then Mr. H is going to have to, where that fencing stops, that 100 feet where that ends, he's going to get to that end 
and he's gonna have to drive the truck down where it's clear and then cut in and bag the truck in if I'm making any sense because our tow line or tow hooks are on the front of the truck right so with them being on the front of the truck he's gonna have to maneuver the truck in there and then back in and then pull from that direction if I'm making sense so he just can't go along the fence line um, which is probably what we would have done with the tractor he can't do that we have to drive and cut in so what we're doing is we're clearing a pathway where there's not so much brush and trees so that he can just pull up in there and we don't have to worry about busting our tires on tree stumps and things like that that we might not be able to see because that has happened to our tractor um, as well with one of our tires and we had to have it repaired because we had a stump in the ground that we did not see and it was jagged and it punctured the front tire so <laughs> so yeah but I tell you what though I will say you know in all of the research that uh, we have done this has been a learning experience for us and of course you know we've watched others do it we've watched Danny from Deep, uh, Deep South Homestead um, put his fence whew, put his fence up and I'm telling you watching his videos has been like the best thing <laughs> that we could have done to help us visually see how that we can do this and then make adjustments based upon the layout of our land but uh deep south homestead their videos have been instrumental in us being able to maneuver and stretch the fence and and all of that and they had this fence stretcher and i mean they have been awesome you know just awesome with their uh tutorials on how you can put up your own fence stretch your own fence you know we watch them and that really did help us a lot you know so we appreciate their videos and what they have put out to be a help to others because it has certainly been a help to us so y'all that is going to do it for today's video our guineas are trapped again <laughs> Them dodo birds always get caught up in something. That's our geek squad. Yep, they the geek squad. <laughs> the lead guinea, I call him Gleek. <laughs> the head guinea, the one that the one that they all follow. He's a male. The one that they all follow, I call him Gleek. And if you don't know who Gleek was. Oh, that was a long time ago. You might not know. <laughs> but anyway, we call him Gleek. So Gleek has led them back around into the little pen behind the barn. And now they won't go back through the door that they went in. They're up against the wall, the fence, wanting to come out this side. So I got to go lead my dodo birds back out. <laughs> but y'all, that's going to do it. I'm going to be doing different cut-ins for this video, just putting different uh, clips and, and footage in, you know, as we have been. Man, there's a whole video that I lost. It was so fun, too. I hate that I lost that footage. Maybe I, I thought I was recording and I was not, but it was so much fun uh, doing that portion of the fence stretching uh, along that first line that we, no, the second line that we were pulling. We had a blast, but I lost that. I don't have that footage, so I'm going to be just doing cut-ins so you can see um, the progress and, and um, you can see how the fence is coming along. So we are going to be trying to wrap up the next 500 feet so that we can move on to the other side. Oh, look at them came out. They found their way out. Good for them. So, you know, the biggest challenge, even though this part is the woodiest with the most trees, the most brush, it's, it's the worst for this side. But the other side, we have a drop off. Yeah. And that is going to be a challenge as to how we are going to get that fence up on that side. Because we have a serious drop. I think it's like a six foot 
drop, if I'm not mistaken. Could be a little further than that. But that's the challenge right there. So we'll 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 share that when we get to that point. But for now, the next 500 foot, I'm going to be recording all of that as we go as well. So y'all stay tuned. I apologize that this video is so long, but I really needed to get as much of the footage in as possible in this one video. So that when we move to the next one, I think the next one is going to be just as long. I don't know. But it might be. <laughs> More than likely. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for today. Um, hopefully, this video wasn't so long. But uh, in any case, if you like the video, like the video. Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single video that we upload to our channel. Thank you all so much for watching Homestead Heart. Peace and blessings to each and every one of you. And I'll see you in the next video. This is going to be hours and hours and hours of editing. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs>